What's going on guys? Welcome to this edition of State of the Weather Address, Hurricane Irma edition, and this is the September 7th late evening update on Hurricane Irma, and we're starting to reach consensus, and I'll tell you what I think about that in a second here. I'll also show you a couple of resources that you can use to track the hurricane, but we're just going to give you a quick update, the big changes that have happened, the latest models, and all of that. So let's get into this episode of State of the Weather Address. All right, here's the current satellite, and here's Hurricane Irma right here. Okay, we got Hurricane Jose over there, and uh, Hurricane Katia, I think that's how you say it, over there. So we have got a trolley of hurricanes here, but the big focus is Irma right now. And it still looks pretty, pretty healthy. Uh, the other day, yesterday, it slammed through Barbuda. I think that was a while back, and it really, really was intense. And... This uh, hurricane is staying far enough north of a lot of these land features down here and probably going to be north of Cuba where it shouldn't tamper with the hurricane too much. And this thing is expected to track northeastward and remain pretty powerful. It's going to continue to feed in very warm uh, moisture from the Atlantic Ocean. And what's interesting to note is the temperatures out here are very warm and a very above average out here. Uh, just along Cuba and just north of Cuba. And if that can continue to track just north of Cuba without running into it, this thing could maintain Category 5 strength and uh, maybe be high-end Category 4 by the time it hits the United States. Here's the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, we got Katia over here, Category 1, 80 mile an hour winds. Jose, Category 2 now. This is actually strengthening uh, quite a bit, 105 mile an hour winds. I think Irma is going to mess with Jose a little bit with its outflow and shearing issues, but nonetheless, this could become a major hurricane and track very similar to where Irma is. And now we got Irma, 175 miles an hour. It's weakened a little bit, as to be expected. Um, this will fluctuate up and down just a bit, but I think you're going to see it kind of stick around 175 miles an hour for uh, several hours here. And uh, pressure is at 922 millibars, and that is moving northeast. So, so this is the current track by the uh, NHC. This is what they expect. Here we are right here. Um, this was actually a few hours ago, so this is more like Thursday night. But uh, they think it's going to stay north of Cuba. That's very important, and it's going to track right through Miami. This is starting to get very concerning for Florida as we've started to see some consensus in the models east and westward right towards Florida and it's been pretty consistent with this track over the past 24 hours um, if you average out all of the models and stuff like that. We have may have seen just a tad uh, westward trend today but overall there's a lot of consensus here and by 8 a.m. on Sunday morning they expect landfall to occur in Florida and uh, Monday and Tuesday get farther north into the southeastern United States. So. This is moving west-northwest at 16 miles an hour, but notice uh, the big turn right here. The turn's going to happen when it gets in north-central Cuba. You'll see this almost 70-degree turn to the north, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I think that could happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a big turn, and it really will make a huge difference where this happens. If it happens just a little bit earlier, it completely misses Florida. If it happens just a little bit later, it could be on the other side of Florida. So very important when that turn happens. This map is from tropicaltidbits.com. This is showing the, the jet stream anomalies and stuff. They have some really good graphics here. And uh, this is the NAM 12 cam. Now you can see this trough move through in the northeastern United States. Okay, right here. That's going to draw the hurricane towards it. Here's our hurricane right here. We've got a ridge out here and kind of a, a ridge building out here. The hurricane's going to want to track right in between here. So the strength of these troughs and ridges will really depend or really uh, it's really going to affect the hurricane's track here. So as we get towards uh, Friday, Saturday here, as the hurricane gets close to Florida, look what happens uh, just to the north here. We've got some uh, low pressure developing here in the southeastern United States near Alabama. That's going to make this hurricane begin to steer north more. Okay, and that's a, a new development here. And the the 13 or the 12 km NAM is really starting to pick that up. And you can see that begins to really start to track to the north as that that occurs. 
and the 13 or the 12 cam NAM's got it kind of moving along the NHC's track and that goes right into Miami there. So that's really pulling it north pretty quick. Another good website is pivotalweather.com and they've got some really beautiful graphics here. This is the NAM computer model again and we'll show you a little bit farther um, or a little bit zoomed in here and this is showing the wind speeds and here it is right here 958 millibar and you got winds well over 60 miles an hour here but we'll track it into Florida you can see it tracks north of Cuba just stays north if it goes only farther south you'll probably have a lot more disruptions but nonetheless I think that'll weaken it a bit uh, and then it tracks north into Florida and that tracks it right through Miami or just to the west of Miami there hits it right on the nose so that's the farthest the NAM will go out at the moment and then you can see Hurricane Jose starting to enter the the NAM's grid right here uh, on uh, that's about Sunday night there so again Cuba these areas down here might disrupt it a little bit but you also have warmer water temperatures here so we should see a maintained category 5 category 4 intensity as it gets towards Florida so that's the NAM computer model the GFS computer model we'll see what it does it's moving it a little bit further north and it turns it a little bit more to the east there and hits the eastern side of Florida barely hits Florida actually I don't even think the eye wall is going to be hitting Florida there but it keeps it a little more intense and almost sub 900 millibars 903 right there so it keeps it what looks to be category five high in category four as it hits the side of Florida it doesn't really quite hit it head on it hits uh, Georgia and South Carolina head on though as we get towards Monday so you can see that just very slight change and it, it completely makes a difference the reason being you've got Florida here if it goes up Florida it actually is kind of a shield for Georgia and uh, South Carolina because that's gonna that hurt it's really gonna weaken the hurricane as it goes over land but just any slight change to the east and all of a sudden becomes a big threat for South Carolina and Georgia so that's the GFS computer model let's look at the Canadian computer model uh, it's a little bit weaker with it but it takes a similar track to the NAM 4 cam not as a sharp turn to the north as much but it does track it farther west and it's a little bit weaker I think the GFS with its 903 millibar low pressure center I think that's off by 20 to 30 millibars at least in terms of amplification but we'll see it, it tends to over amplify these things and then the European computer model you can see that hurricane it that is uh, right there that is at Saturday morning and then this is going to be Sunday morning it actually the latest computer model the latest uh, European computer model tracks the hurricane on the western side of Florida okay so we've got a couple models that go towards the eastern side of Florida we got you know a couple models that go right in the middle and then one to the western side of the Florida but overall the consensus is getting pretty scary for the Miami area I think there's a lot of consensus right over there. Very similar to the NHC track, maybe just a tad west now with uh, the latest model data. But uh, the European computer model, that's uh, looking scary as well and pretty intense, 927 millibars. So what do these all look like put together? This is from cyclocane.com and this shows the spaghetti charts of all of these models. This is Hurricane Jose over here and now this is Hurricane Irma here, Hurricane Katia, probably going to be a threat to Mexico. But we'll zoom into Hurricane Irma here. And most of those models are converging right along Miami, Fort, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, and uh, maybe even up to Jacksonville and Orlando. But look how they all are starting to converge towards Miami. Again, you might see a little bit of a farther west trend with the latest model data but overall there has been over the past 24 hours a good consensus on the hurricane tracking up right on the eastern side of Florida and you can see as we scroll down a little bit here's the intensities as we go out the, on the bottom here this I believe is the hours in advance here so this is a few hours ago and this is a few hours into the future and this is the wind speed so you can see it tracks 
And most of the models have wind speeds of about 150 miles an hour, you know, maybe 48 hours from now, Friday into Saturday. And by the time it hits the Florida coast, you're dealing with maybe 135 miles an hour or so on average. Either way, I think this is going to be about a Category 4 hurricane as it tracks towards Miami. The GFS would say otherwise, but I think the GFS is overdone at the moment. But 135, 140 to maybe 150 miles an hour looking to be potentially very likely here. And it tracking up to Miami with a hard right turn, hard 70 degree turn here happening sometime Saturday into Sunday. So that's the uh, current outlook, um, current update on Hurricane Irma. And if you want more of these weather forecasting update videos from natural disasters across the United States and Canada, go and click subscribe. We're going to be releasing more of these. I'm going to be releasing forecasting tutorials, space weather events. There's a lot of space weather going on right now as well and stuff like that. So go ahead and click subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them and share this with a friend, especially if uh, they're in Florida or that area down there. So Without, uh, with all that being said, thanks for tuning in to today's edition of State of the Weather Address, and I'll see you soon.